Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Healthy for the Holidays. We are in week two, and this week is going to be all about the nervous system, which I am so excited to talk about. I'm going to give you um, very basic introductions to the nervous system and why you might want to start caring about that if you have ever struggled or are continuing to struggle with your weight and body image. Um, before we do that, a couple of quick reminders. I will be on here about 8.30 Mountain Time every day through every weekday, I should say, through the end of the year. Um, and I will be talking about some various things um, to help you with the holidays, the holiday season, and to get through that in a, in a more healthy way. Um, and I will also start talking to you about some uh, programs and things that you can join and jump in on if you want to go deeper into some of these subjects. So one of the first things I'll talk about is that on December 13th, I will be doing a master class. It will be taped. It'll be two, two and a half hours. Uh, and it's all about how to talk to your kids about food, weight, and body image. It's one of my most requested topics um, to, because I find that many parents are scared to talk to their children about food and weight and bodies because we've been told that we're going to cause eating disorders if we do that. Um, I'm here to put some of those myths to rest and to teach you about how to talk to your kids about food and bodies successfully without causing harm. So that's going to happen on Tuesday, December 13th. Um, I can't remember the time. Uh, I, I believe it's, um, gosh, I believe it's one o'clock mountain time, uh, which is noon Pacific time. Uh, but I will put all of the links to sign up for that masterclass. It's $19 um, for more than two hours of content. You'll get the recording. You can watch it over and over again. Um, and I will put the links to sign up for that if you are interested. Okay. So we are talking about the nervous system this week. I have found that the nervous system has become a huge buzzword. Um, I would say in the last year or two, especially on uh, on social media, everybody's talking about the nervous system. Um, just like everything else with social media, I find that um, uh, people get into a buzzword and many people start talking about it and they don't totally understand what they're talking about. Um, so I'll just let you know quickly, I have extensive uh, training, specific training in the nervous system. Um, I've done a couple of different courses and deep dives that are available to those who hold a clinical license and um, have studied with some of the best minds in the field of polyvagal theory and nervous system development, nervous system regulation. Um, so I do, I would, I would certainly even myself with hours and hours and hours of study um, and training and experience, uh, I would not call myself the expert in the nervous system. I would say I know a whole lot about it. I specifically know a lot about it in relation to food and body and your weight, because of course that's my lens. Um, but just be careful what you're absorbing and listening to as far as buzzwords on the internet go, um, because people get super excited about an idea and then they go and sort of spread their view of the idea. And sometimes it's on and sometimes it's um, not exactly correct or relevant. So we're going to talk about the nervous system this week. And I first want to set up kind of what the nervous system even is. Like, why are people talking so much about the nervous system? Why does it even matter? I want you to think of the nervous system like your control panel um, in your body. So everything you think, feel, say, do, um, every organ that functions, every breath you take, every lung inhalation, exhalation, every heartbeat, that is governed by your nervous system. It is the control panel for your life. So we have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is your brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is everything, your, your organs, your extremities, um, the nerves in your body that sort of go out from the central column, which is the brain and the spinal cord. That's your central nervous system. Then you have your peripheral nervous system. And within the peripheral nervous system, you you have your somatic system uh, and you also have your autonomic system. Okay. So that's kind of the, you know, the, 
the, the scientific terms for the nervous system. But the reason why it's important for you is so that you know that nothing we do as human beings, nothing we say, nothing we think, nothing we feel, um, nothing that happens within our body happens outside of this control panel of your nervous system. So for that reason, your nervous system is incredibly important to, to all of you, to all of us. Um, as a humanity, we share this nervous system. We all have a nervous system. We all have this control panel that really dictates who we are in this world. Okay. So your nervous system is incredibly important. And what most people right now on the internet are talking about, um, they're talking about nervous system dysregulation. And before I talk about dysregulation, I just want to say that your nervous system's very um, primitive sort of primal job is to scan your environment always for safety and danger, and then adjust accordingly based on what it finds. That's a, that's a gross oversimplification of what the nervous system does, but to put it into terms that everybody can understand of its importance and why it's important to us, that's how I describe it. Um, your nervous system's job is to constantly scan your environment, looking for signs of safety and danger, and then adjust the body accordingly. Uh, so for instance, if it's, you know, cold outside, your nervous system sends a signal for you to put on a coat or notice that you're cold or give you goosebumps to tell you to, you know, do something to heat you up, right? Um, or if the nervous system, or if it's too hot, same thing, shed layers, start sweating, so it'll cool you down, right? So that's a super simple example of the nervous system going, okay, what's happening in the environment and how do I keep this body function safe? So it makes you take breath. It makes you take a breath, right? It makes you blink your eyes in order to keep your eyeballs lubricated so that you can see, right? It's the nervous system does everything to keep you alive. Now, why is that important? Because um, and I, I promise I'm going to, I'm going to bring this all home into why you care about it from a, from a weight and body perspective, but I want you to understand that your nervous system job is to keep you alive. Okay. That being said, what is important to understand is that all of your behaviors, all of them, the way you speak, the way you talk, the way you think, the way you feel, the actions you take, whether you like them or not. From a nervous system perspective, your nervous system only does behaviors that it believes are in service of your survival, okay? Without getting too deep into it today, I'll kind of continue to drip some of these concepts over the, over the course of the week. Our nervous systems are shaped by, by everyone and everything around us from, I mean, depending on who you talk to and listen to, starts sort of even before you come out of the womb, but let's talk about it from when you come out of the womb, everything in your environment is shaping your nervous system by the way your caregivers make eye contact with you or not, by the tone of the voice that your caregivers use, um, by the environment that you're in, whether it's cold or hot or um, dangerous or, um, exposed or whatever, every person and everything in your environment starts to shape and what we call tune your nervous system. You might kind of start to see where this is going. So for people who, and there's a spectrum of this, for people who grew up in incredibly traumatic environments, those environment finely tuned their nervous system. For people who grew up in somewhat difficult environments, those environments tuned their nervous system. For people who grew up in pleasant environments and maybe had some difficulties along the way, those difficulties and those environments tuned their nervous system. Everybody's nervous system is tuned by their environment, both the people and the actual physical environment they're in from birth. Okay? So, by way of example and why this matters, right? By way of example, let's say you were a 
um, a baby in your environment and your mother and father are married, right? They're in a nuclear family and your dad yells a lot because he's stressed out at work, right? He yells a lot. And so your mom is on edge, right? And she's you know, trying to not take the brunt of this yelling and she lives in sort of fear or she's on edge and dad yells a lot and it's angry. That baby is tuning to the environment that they are uh, born into, okay? So the baby is attuned to mom's hypervigilance and stress in the environment. The baby is attuned to the volume and the decibel of dad's voice and how it feels and whether or not it feels biting or angry or safe and loving. The baby starts to tune to that environment. And that tuning creates things like stress responses, hypervigilance, um, uh, attunement to danger in people's voices, attunement to danger in people's facial expressions, okay? There's a lot more to go into in this, but just bringing you in the progression of a nervous system and why it matters. We are all tuned by our environments and everyone and everything in it, okay? And if you had... Um, any type of disruption, difficulty, even perceived threat or danger. And I'm not talking actual threat to life danger. Some people did have that, but even like uh, you're in first grade and you're the last one to get picked for a, a, a team and you're feeling that embarrassment, right? We wouldn't call that big trauma, right? But to that first grader, it was what we called little trauma. And that starts to tune the system to the environment. That happens a few times. And that little first grader's nervous system gets tuned to the shame or discomfort that they're feeling. Okay. Fast forward, your nervous systems are tuned by everyone and everything in your environment. And then your nervous system starts to dictate your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors in service of your safety and survival. So let's go back to the first grader on the playground. He's the last to get picked. He feels very ashamed and sad and, you know, doesn't feel good. He goes home tells grandma how what a hard day he has grandma takes him for ice cream okay so nervous system is tuned to sadness grandma takes him for ice cream that brings him to joy right ice cream gets fired and wired as something that brings that child joy sweets treats food gets fired and wired in with joy to that child that happens again the next time he skins his knee or he cries because he's had a hard day and mom says, have a cookie, right? Firing and wiring creates now what the nervous system interprets as a re-regulation or a regulation of that system in that environment, right? Child is not feeling good, sad, scared, shame, lonely. Food starts to feel better, connection, when I'm sad, scared, shame, lonely, food makes me feel better. These are how our habits and behaviors, all of them, not just around food, this happens with you know, um, alcohol or uh, love or um, uh, uh, spending money or whatever. These firing and wirings happen when we have a dysregulated, uncomfortable system and we need something to make us feel better, okay? So this firing and wiring around our patterns of behavior starts very, very early. And then by the time we're adults and adults are coming to me and saying, I'm having a really hard time, you know, um, cutting the sugar, or I'm having a really hard time, um, you know, because at four o'clock every day, I tend to overeat this or whatever. And I, I can't seem to make myself stop. One of the places that I start in my work is to help people understand how many of our food behaviors are from a nervous system perspective, a coping mechanism and a way to regulate a dysregulated nervous system. Many of your food behaviors are a coping mechanism and a way to regulate a dysregulated nervous system. And here's something I will tell you, nothing we do cognitively outsmarts our dysregulated nervous system. 
your nervous system will always win. Your body and your system is designed to keep you alive. So just thinking, I'm going to cut sugar out for a month, right? Um, will never override the power of a nervous system that is designed to keep you safe, okay? So a more effective strategy is for us to start to become aware of our nervous system dysregulation, when that happens and what that looks like, and start to work with the system uh, using different coping skills to regulate it. So it um, untangles the firing and wiring of the food behaviors that aren't serving us, okay? Now, that's a lot for, for one day. That's kind of a, a, a broad sweeping introduction to the nervous system. But what I want you to take away from today is that many, 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 many of our behaviors around food have to do with an unconscious need of the nervous system to try and regulate itself in the face of dysregulation. Your nervous, is, your nervous system is always acting uh, for your survival. That's what the nervous system does. It's always acting in an effort to keep you safe. And so even the behaviors that you're saying, why do I do this? I don't want to do this. Um, uh, this isn't good for me cognitively. Somewhere in your system, it believes it's keeping you safe or you wouldn't do it. That is how um, human beings work. Our system is always trying to regulate us towards safety and survival. So for my binge eaters out there, and they're going, binging doesn't keep me safe. Binging makes me feel terrible. Well, there is a reason why your system believes that it needs that behavior in order to keep it safe, okay? And so if we start reframing our questions rather than why do I do this? Why can't I stop doing this? Why am I always like this too? Why does my system feel safe when this happens? Why would my system want me to do this to keep me safe? That's the line of questioning that we want to start asking with all of our food behaviors, okay? And when we get curious about it from that perspective, different answers come up. Okay, day one on introduction to the nervous system is letting you know that all of your behaviors are in service of your survival. So start asking, why might my system be trying to keep me safe? Where we're going for the rest of the week is to start to identify your systems, um, identify when they're dysregulated. And also I'm gonna tie that into why our systems feel so dysregulated over the holiday season. That is a um, prime time when people start to feel dysregulated is over the holiday season. So we're gonna continue to talk about that this week. I hope this brief introduction was helpful to you. Let me know what questions you have. We'll pick up here tomorrow.